Well, welcome again to the 35th Harkin Steak Fry. Uh, we've had a lot of great speakers in, uh, in the past, and we have another great speaker today, a good friend, uh, the governor of Maryland, Martin O'Malley, who has just done great things in his state. Uh, I, I'm kind of jealous, really, uh, quite frankly. Uh, I chair the Education Committee in the Senate, and uh, you know we look at all the different states and what's happening. And it was brought to my attention that Maryland now uh, exceeds all states in the number of kids who pass their advanced placement tests. To me, that says something about Governor O'Malley's devotion to education in the state. He's kept tuition down in his state. Uh, and so the way I see it, he's put money into, into schools, rebuilding schools, school construction, renovation. So uh, to my way of thinking, he's, uh, he's my education governor and has done a lot of great things for education. We take pride in our education in Iowa. I wanted to have him come out and meet Iowans and, and uh, talk to our steak fry. So nice to have Martin O'Malley here from Maryland. Senator, thank you. I'm a huge fan of your senator. Uh, senator Harkin, more than any other senator, I think, in the U.S. Senate, has accomplished things that reach all across our country. I mean, I don't know another senator that's uh, touched as many lives in as many real ways as he has with the Americans with Disabilities Act. Uh, every family, every community. We were talking on the way up here how gratifying it must be to run into people from towns and places you've never ever been who thank you for what you've done for their family members and, and for themselves. So uh, look, I'm, I'm honored to be here. Uh, we are, I'm also the chair of the Democratic Governors Association. And uh, this is a state that we intend to win in 2014. Democratic governors are all about doing the things that work in order to improve uh, education, improve public safety, create jobs, and expand opportunity. We're not ideologues. We believe that you bring people together to do the things that work. And that's the sort of leadership that Senator Harkin brought to the U.S. Senate. And uh, so uh, I'm, I'm very, very honored to be here. Thank you for the nice things you've said about what the people of my state have accomplished. In the toughest of times, our state's been able to move forward, improving education, improving public safety, and and really giving our kids a better shot at being winners in this new economy. So I'm honored to be here, and it's been great to meet all your friends and look forward to uh, working with you to uh, help the people of Iowa elect a new Democratic governor in 2014. And carry it for Barack Obama this year, too. We're going we're, we're gonna to work hard to carry uh, Iowa for Barack Obama. He carried it last time. It's a close race in Iowa. Uh, I, I rode out on the plane with him a couple of weeks ago. And as you know, he's taken a bus trip across Iowa. He's been to here a couple, three times. He was here with uh, Joe Biden and Jill and his wife just a couple weeks ago. Well, just the day after the after the convention. And he'll be here a lot of times. Uh, uh, Vice President Biden's going to be here the next couple of days here in Iowa. So I can tell you, uh, President Obama told me personally that they are investing a lot in this state and they intend to win Iowa. And we intend to carry it for him. So, Governor O'Malley, how difficult is it to begin this process of testing the waters in Iowa before the 2012 election has actually even been held? No, I don't know. That's not what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm here for. Uh, I'm here because my friend Senator Harkin asked me to come, and Iowa is a very important state to President Obama and to the re-election of the president, which is very important to the people of my state. I mean, in Maryland, the things that we've been able to do, race to the top, improving education, improving public safety. Those things wouldn't have been possible without President Obama's help, without the help of and the courageous votes of people like Senator Harkin. And uh, Democratic governors uh, need our president to be reelected so we can continue to make progress for our people. And it's, it's a great honor to be invited here. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, meeting the senator's friends. And most importantly, I'm looking forward to helping the people of Iowa uh, as we move forward and, and elect more Democratic governors across our country in the years ahead. Governor, since you brought up 2014 uh, in your role with the Governors Association, are you actively scouting Democratic candidates for governor here? And if you have any conversations specifically with former Governor Culver? Well, I know Senator, I mean, I know Governor Culver. In fact, Governor Culver and I both traveled to Iraq together. And, uh, you know, he, uh, his soldiers, his men and women in uniform were serving there with men and women from Maryland. And we'd swap flags and cell phone cameras whenever we came across groups of our, our people. So I like... Uh, I like Governor Culver and his wife Mary, they're good friends of mine. I mean, ultimately, in every primary, the Democratic governors 
kind of the DGA takes a step back and people in every state have to figure out their own uh, politics and their primary. And uh, it's, having spent some time in Iowa, I believe that the people of Iowa, when given a choice of moving forward or falling back, always choose to move forward. That's in your DNA. And I think that's what you're going to do again when the opportunity uh, of the governor's race comes up. Senator Harkin, what's the number one message you hope to communicate during today's program? Well, I think that the number one message is sort of what uh, Governor O'Malley said. Uh, progress. We've got to keep moving forward. We can't go back. And if you listen to the Republican Party's platform, read it, and listen to what they're saying, as I will say today, they want to take us back before Roosevelt. Not Franklin Roosevelt, Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, I mean, undo all of the kind of the, the social contract that we have built up in America since the 19, early 1900s. Uh, the social contract dealing with education, with health care, with the environment, uh, jobs, retraining. We built a wonderful social contract in this country. And, and don't take my word for it, but Bruce Bartlett, who was President Reagan's economic advisor, said that this Ryan budget is a monstrosity. A monstrosity in terms of shredding this social contract. And to me, that's what's at stake in this election. And that's a message I want to get across, that, that, that uh, we got to redouble our efforts and work hard. Uh, we're not going to have as much money. I saw a figure the other day, I, I can't vouch for it, but that in the super PACs and all these ads you're seeing that you don't know where a lot of the money's coming from, that we're being outspent over 10 to 1. So it's going to take uh, boots on the ground, people working hard to get our vote out. Uh, going, going, gone, Rod. <laughs> this, this, I mean, everybody says this is going to be decided on the economy. How much is foreign policy starting to uh, become uh, a key issue in this race? <laughs> well, I, I, I think what what Governor Romney did this week in stepping into this fray in Libya, the, the terrible thing that happened to our ambassador and other Americans, I, I think, you know, when it comes to foreign policy, you just can't shoot from the hip. And I think it indicates to me, and this is my own view, Rod, I'm just saying this, that it seemed to me that Romney was more intent on scoring some kind of political points than he was in buttressing America's foreign policy. And I think that's why you saw so many Republicans running away from him on it. I don't know if you wanted to add anything to that, Mark. No, no, no. I, think, uh, I think you're exactly right. The but it's a, it's a complicated it's a complicated world that we live in. But I think that when you look at uh, when you compare our president, his stature, the uh, uh, the manner in which he carries himself in the international arena, and uh, and guides our our country and moves it forward, and then contrast that with uh, former Governor Romney, who has a difficult time even being a good guest at another nation's Olympics, I think there's really no no contest there. I mean. Uh, President Obama is our commander-in-chief, and uh, in a complicated time, uh, he's moving our country forward, leading us forward, and I think that that's uh, pretty clear uh, as people uh, make their decisions about this race. I mean, there is no progress without jobs, but at the same time, one of the jobs of our commander-in-chief is to represent us in an increasingly complicated international world. Well, you mentioned you've been to Iraq. Are there other ways that you have uh, worked to inform yourself about foreign policy um, as a governor? Oh, I don't know. As Democratic governors, we focus on jobs and opportunity and bringing people together to make the tough decisions now. Uh, and, and that's what we do. Uh, and at the same time, we also know that the more we can open up markets around the world, to the services and the goods that are produced in our states, whether it's Maryland or Iowa, but that creates jobs here at home. And uh, I think the people of Iowa and the people of Maryland actually share a, a, a pretty uh, uh, a pretty inspiring opportunity right now to figure out new ways to feed, fuel, and heal this world of ours. And you see innovations happening in our state and, and here in your state uh, that allow us to do that, from biofuels to wind energy to uh, the cures that allow us to be a healing force in the world. I, I think it's an exciting time uh, to, for us as, uh, uh, to be Americans. See ya. Thank First you. speaking engagement oh, in no. Iowa. Uh, like this. 
It might, it might be. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I spoke here and, yeah, it might be. Okay. Uh, I've, I've, been, I've had the honor to speak at a number of JJs and Democratic <laughs> gatherings and probably dozen or more states over the last year that I've served as Democratic Governor right. Chair. But, and it's great to be in Iowa again. I spent some time here in 84 and 88. Okay. Nice people and, uh, and, and very good and forward-moving people. I'm, I'm very uh, grateful, Senator. Thanks for having me here. Well, he's, a, he's an alumnus of Catholic University. That's where Ruth and I went to law school. Although some of the CU alums think that the law school guy is kind of, I don't know, not really alums, but we really are. And so uh, Martin came out here in the 80s as a, as a, as a, as a college student to work for, uh, on, uh, on Gary Hart's campaigns here in Iowa. So he knows what the winters are like in Iowa, okay? <laughs> and I like the summers too. <laughs> and thank, the fall. Thank you all very, very thank much. Thank you. Thank you.